I'm a heart surgeon. That means every day I go to work and I've got to tell somebody that because of things they've probably done to themselves that maybe they weren't even aware of, I'm going to have to open their chest and fix their heart. And after doing that quite a few times a year, I began to realize that the people sitting in my office didn't really get the bigger picture. They didn't understand what it was they were doing wrong. Because the major risk factors for rusting of your arteries, which is what I worry about, and it is, after all, the leading cause of death in America, are high blood pressure, the wrong kinds of cholesterol, and problems with your blood sugar, which is diabetes. And they all have a unifying cause, obesity, for most people. So what is it that made these really wise and bright people utterly unable to cope with a major problem that they were obviously facing? Heck, you can see it on the outside. You can get on a scale and look at the needle that's moving back and forth. You can even measure it with a measuring tape in your belt. So it's not a secret that most folks are overweight. The problem I couldn't understand was why weren't they able to address it? And that was my inspiration for the book. Because Mike Royzen and I both looked at this American public and thought, these folks ought to get this picture, but something's not happening. Why is there a $50 billion diet industry with a 98% failure rate? What gives? So we thought to ourselves, if we're going to get America to think differently about this whole problem, we've got to have to make a whole different paradigm for them. And the big picture is the following, that unless you're smart about this process, unless in fact you learn how to diet smart rather than dieting hard, you're never going to be able to beat dieting problems because you are biologically hardwired to gain weight. That's how our species survived. Centuries ago, our ancestors were able to survive on the planet because we could store fat at times of famine. That exact same characteristic that saved our lives back then isn't needed anymore because today you don't have to go hunting for buys and you can just slide the soup out of the way and pick up the milk carton. And when people have that kind of an ease and access to calories, they have to rethink their responsibility and their role with food. And the best way to do that is to educate America. That's been our philosophy all along. Because if you can get people to see that health is cool, that health is hip, that feeling good about yourself, not just looking good, but living longer and enjoying it, can be things that you can really aspire to at all ages and both genders. So we organized the book into a couple major categories. The first is the biology of fat. I mean, what is it that gives, that allows your body to metabolize fat so efficiently that you can't get rid of it? And when people begin to appreciate that carbohydrates, proteins, and fats can all become fats, and what really allows you to lose weight is being smart about which of those you put in your body and when. When it's not about the fat, the carb, or the protein's bad, but which ones of each of those are the problems, you begin to get more sophisticated. So the average American starts to say, hey, you know, I want to eat the healthy fats for me because I know some fats are necessary. I want to get the right kinds of carbohydrates, the whole grain foods, because I know some of these are important for me. And I'm going to shy away from the fried foods and the trans fats and the simple carbohydrates. Those basic pictures start to come alive in the American public's eyes with the imagery we try to create in our books. And then, of course, besides the biology of fat, there's the psychology of the mind. And there's no surprise here. A lot of folks eat and have problems with food because of emotional issues. And we think that some of this is because of shame and guilt. And, of course, the difference is Guilt is they're going to find out, and shame is they already know. But in addition, there's an often a, a deeper need inside of the average person. The need is as deep as the Pacific Ocean. A craving to connect with something that's more important than us and our day-to-day -day mundane lives. And if you don't deal with those deeper-seated spiritual problems, then you're unable to fill that gap the way you need to, and you look to food as your medication, which is why addictions are so commonly manifest with food. And so when people start to think that through, and they can deal with the deepest issues of all, which is do you deserve to be thin? Do you think that you can afford to be thin, that you can deal with the possibility of failure because you look good, and that might put you at risk? These are the kinds of issues that involve psychology of the mind. So we wrapped those two together, and we created three different elements. One, we got a cheat sheet that people can use to get through life and understand dieting better. Number two, we have a you workout plan which is a program that allows you to exercise without any excuses. Now, how do you get rid of the excuses? You get rid of the need for balls, bends, barbells, anything else. Your body becomes your gym. And if you know your body's your gym, and you can do it in your living room or in the hotel room or wherever you are, whenever you are, and you don't need babysitters or to go anywhere to get it done, that makes it a lot easier for folks to do the exercise that's so critical. And, of course, muscle's important because muscle per size burns up about 50 times more calories than fat. So having some muscle in your body is critical. That's why yo-yo dieting is so bad for you. Because when you gain weight, you gain fat. When you lose weight, you lose muscle. Which means when you've done this whole process, you've got a lot of extra fat on board, but it's not metabolizing any calories. Which means even a little bit of calories puts extra fat on your side. And finally, we've got an action plan for food. Which means creating some resiliency in your system. Making it easier for you to eat the foods that are good for you. And making it also easier for you not to eat too many of anything. 
put the whole program together, we leave you with one big idea. You know when you're driving along in your car and you make a mistake, what does your GPS system say? Does it berate you? Does it spank you? Does it get mad at you? No. It very calmly says, at the next opportune time, make an authorized U-turn. We want you to make an authorized U-turn without a lot of emotion, the way a scientist would. Because for the first time in our history, we have enough scientific insights into what causes fat to accumulate in our bodies that we can begin to deal with it in a mature and intelligent way. And so next time you're at a cocktail party, instead of berating yourself for putting your fingers deep in the cheese, instead think to yourself, would I feed this food to my friend or to my family? And if not, make the authorized U-turn and regain your health and have fun while you're doing it. Thank you.